everyone, Jamie here. So after making a prom wrist corsage two weeks ago and a dream catcher necklace last week, I still have fun and creative jewelry on the brain. And there's no better DIY than a mashup DIY. So get ready because this week I'm going to be merging a bracelet craft and a stringing craft in order to make a spunky shoestring bracelet. Let's do it, girl. For your shoelace bracelet, you're going to need, surprise, surprise, a shoelace. Make sure that it's a cord shoelace or a rounded shoelace, not the typical flat shoelace that I think you're probably used to. If you want to resize the bracelet for a perfect fit, feel free to also nab a pair of scissors. And if you want to give your bracelet a final professional touch, head to your local craft store to pick up some needle nose pliers as well as some jump rings, spring clasps, and cord ends. All right, here we go. Step one, holding the shoelace in your left hand, make a loop in the shoelace with your right hand. The end of the shoelace should lay over the rest of the shoelace. Step two, keeping your first loop pinched together with your left thumb and index finger, create a second small loop from the remaining shoelace with your right hand. Keep this new loop pinched together with your thumb and finger. Step three, guide the second loop into the first loop using your right index finger. You'll be placing the second loop over the right part of the first loop and then under the left part of the first loop. Now, before letting go of anything, pull down the original end of your shoelace with your left hand in order to tighten the shoelace on itself into a knot. Now you have your first self-contained knot. Be careful not to pull too tightly on either end of the shoelace or else it's going to unknot itself and you're going to have to start all over. Although now I feel like I know one of those magician tricks. You know what I mean? Like, now there's a knot and now there's not. <laughs> Step four, holding your newly knotted loop with your left hand, create yet another loop with your right hand. Again, push this new loop over the right part of the knotted loop and then under the left part of the knotted loop. You'll want to switch the positioning of your hands here and pull the new loop through while your right hand holds the original knot. You may have to play around pulling it here in order for it to tighten the way you want. Just remember not to pull too extremely hard or else it's going to unknot itself like I told you earlier. It's important to mention here that you should be threading the shoelace the exact same way every time. Don't rotate the knot or loop or anything like that, otherwise your pattern is going to be inconsistent. You'll be able to tell once you make the new knot if it's consistent with the rest of your bracelet. Okay, so you'll be able to see that I did this last loop wrong because the right side is always going over the left side. But up here, this right side is going underneath the left side. So hopefully that makes sense for you. And as you now know, if you do mess up the pattern, it's super easy to undo by just pulling the loop out by tugging on the excess shoelace. Repeat your loops until you've reached the desired length of your bracelet. It looks like this bracelet is only going to go around my wrist once. So if you want to double up your bracelet like I usually do, you're going to need a longer shoelace. Just to give you an idea, my shoelace was 45 inches or about 114 centimeters long. Step five, tie the remaining shoe shoelace ends together and your bracelet is finished. However, if you want to get all professional like me, cut off the extra shoelace material with your scissors. Wrap both ends of the shoelace with a cord end using needle nose pliers. From there, you can attach a spring clasp and jump ring to finish off your look. And there you go, a super spunky shoelace bracelet. If you're really enjoying this craft, feel free to add extra chain link to the cord ends in order to get a more modern look. And cord bracelets aren't just pretty, they're also practical. They're actually used for hiking bracelets all the time because if an emergency rose while being outside, you can use the extra cord for tying down a tent or making a tourniquet or using it as fishing line. For this kind of bracelet, feel free to use a more natural color with thicker loops. How did you decide to make your shoelace bracelet? Tweet me at Jamie Petito, Instagram me at Hey Jamie, or tell me all about it in the comments below. We did it, girl. I'm Jamie, and you're on girl.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Just take some cord and loop it over the subscribe button, and then like pull it down to you, and then click on it. He doesn't tie it that way. We don't all have tying friends with us. Hey, wanna help me tie this? Yeah, I'll come and help you tie it.